Happy New Year, guys, and I'm so excited to start it with this simple makeup tutorial. As usual, all of the products used in this tutorial will be added in the description box below, including the skincare, which I did not record this time. Also, big thanks goes to my model Eve that joined me for this tutorial. And we're diving in straight with Lisa Eldridge Seamless Foundation, which you guys know I love, especially for the photo shoots. And I'm applying it with the thick buffing brush as I want the layer to be as thin as possible. Eve has amazing skin and there is no need for unnecessary layering. As you guys already know, the foundation is self-setting and does not require powdering, so for the concealer I wanted to choose a similar formulation, something that is not overly creamy and sets really quickly, so I chose Laura Mercier Ultra Long Wear Concealer. Absolutely love this concealer for its lightweight formula, it's non-greasy, it's water-resistant and also long-lasting. For contouring, I chose Shade and Illuminate from Tom Ford, which is my new product, and I absolutely love it. This iconic product is infused with moisturizing botanical oils, and the new formula blends seamlessly into the skin. You only need a little bit, as it's quite pigmented, but once it touches the skin, it literally melts into it. As I applied self-setting foundation and this product is a little bit more moisturizing, I prefer to use patting motion to apply it onto the cheeks. Patting motions will ensure that we are not disturbing any layering that we created underneath. And the same goes to the blusher. For the blush, I chose the cream blusher from Dear Dahlia in the shade Sunset Romance. And as usual, in order to achieve flawless canvas, I'm working in layers. So now I'm creating the cream layer, which later on I will be powdering and duplicating everything with the same shades but in the powder form. And although the foundation was self-setting one, I still applied concealer and other creams, you saw me doing that. So I need to make sure that everything is set and not moving throughout the day. So for the first layering of the powder, I chose the very lightweight powder from brand Florasis. And this powder is the most fine powder I have ever tried. It's almost invisible, but it does set the makeup in place. I'm lightly dusting it all over the face and this will be my first powdering stage. So all the other products that I'm going to apply are going to blend from one into another seamlessly. I'm going to come back to building the complexion in a little bit, but for now I want to concentrate on the eyes. As a base for the eyeshadows, I'm using Armani Eye Tint in the shade number 9 and I'm generously applying it all over the eyelid. By generously, I mean a fine layer, but enough to be visible. With all them cream eyeshadows, I do find if you don't work in a fine layer throughout the day, the layers can separate and move, especially around the creasing part of the eye. And to set my creamy eyeshadow, I'm using Tom Ford's Eye Color Quad in the shade Nude Deep and dusting all over um, the eyelid in the same area where I have applied the cream eyeshadow. This will set it in place and also will create a second layer which will last longer throughout the day. These Tom Ford eyeshadows are very expensive but they're so complex in color and you already can see how in the middle of the eyelid the shade reflects silver. But I wanted to play on this a little bit more. So I want to emphasize on that area just a touch further. For this I'm using Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb. All of this color layering creates a really beautiful effect on the eyes. Now that the eyeshadow is almost completed, I am popping a few individual eyelashes on the eyes and while they are drying, I am going to fill in the eyebrows. As I wanted to keep the brows as natural as possible, for the shadow I chose the Dressy Brow Pencil from the brand Limboss and this is the lightest shade that they have. It is the shade Blonde, which I am generously packing onto the brow. But as you can see, the shade is super super light, so even generously packing it, the color is not building too kind of strongly. While I'm doing that, I'm also brushing the hairs through using just a clean spoolie just to make sure that I like the color placement and that the brows are still staying kind of nice and bushy in shape. And once I'm happy with the shading, I'm going over with the got-to-be brow gel and lightly combing the hairs upwards 
for that bushy feel if you guys watch my videos you know that i love this brow gel and i even have one for myself after the brows i have popped some mascara off camera and now i decided to emphasize a little bit on the eye crease for that i'm using this dior poncho eyeshadow palette and that brown shade which is just a tiny bit darker than the one we have applied already and with the eyes closed i'm going around the crease area and slightly dusting the shade all over the eyes and also underneath the eyelid the reason for such color placement is to make the eye visually larger remember we have powdered everything lightly but we haven't gone over and defined the edges of the face now i'm coming back to the complexion and i want to deepen the shading all around the face so for the contouring i am using charlotte tilbury's nude gasm palette which i think is discontinued it's never-ending palette i have it for nearly a year i use it a lot and it's still full the alternative to this shade would be the Charlotte Tilbury's Film Star Bronze and Glow in the shade Light. Once I've done that, I also decided to dab a slight layer of Beauty Light Wand from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Pillow Talk, only concentrating it on the highest points of the cheeks, a little bit above the brow bone and on the ears to make sure that the look is glowing and not too dull. We will also come back to the blusher, but after the lipstick, so I've uh, lightly dusted the lips with foundation brush and whatever was left on it, and now I'm going over and feeling them in with Anastasia Beverly Hills liner in the shade Chai and I'm only concentrating the shading in the outer parts of the lips leaving the middle part kind of a color free next I wanted to define the liner even further and for this I'm swapping for Bobbi Brown's liner in the shade chocolate and lining only the outer parts of the lips creating the ombre shading and here you also see me taking a fresh bullet brush and merging two colors together but leaving the middle part color free once i was happy with the color placement then off camera i lightly dusted the lips with a powder to set the color in place next i'm going to glaze the lips with fenty beauty's glass bomb in the shade shimmering soft pink and I feel like adding the gloss finishes off the look perfectly. You get soft brown defined eyes with a silver shimmer in the middle. And then you also get strongly defined lips with silvery lip gloss in the middle. So the whole look we're playing on a similar contrast with the brown and silvery tones, including the brown shading on the cheeks versus the silvery highlight from Charlotte Tilbury. And here to tie the whole look together, I'm adding a little bit more of the pinky blusher from Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. And of course, I'm finishing off the look with Charlotte Tilbury's Supermodel Body, which I'm applying all over the chest and misting everything with Suit Me Up Hydrating Spray from Limbos to melt all the powders into the skin so the makeup looks nice and fresh. As usual, here is before and after and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial. It is always lovely to see your models taking selfies after the look is completed. When this happens, you know the look is a success and the girls love it as much as you do. So here you go, guys, the first 2024 makeup tutorial. Cheers to many more this year. I am happy to acknowledge that it is nearly a thousand of us now. And I am so excited for everybody who will join and subscribe to my channel this year. Thank you once again for watching and I see you on my next one.